So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is a webinar presented by LEARN, but we have two wonderful guests with us. We have uh, Natalie Larrière from NFB, National Film, Film Board of Canada. And we also have uh, Pierre Doyon, who's a teacher at Lester B. Pearson School Board, who's gonna share some of his experiences with us today. So thank you so much. I'll pass it over to Natalie. Yes, thank you so much, Liana. Uh, so hi, everybody. Um, very, very pleased to be here with you today to show you our fantastic tools to teach uh, in the classroom. So um, a little bit about the NFB as there are like free service uh, teachers or students, I don't know how you call those. Um, uh, so basically, I'll tell you who we are. So the NFB is a, is a Canadian film producer to begin uh, that... Uh, produce uh, con Canadian content that represents uh, Canadian realities. Um, and so we do documentaries, animation, uh, interactive productions, uh, and all the material, pedagogical material that is in link with that. Um, and so we also, uh, most of our subjects are social uh, uh, events happening in the world or here, they're really um, talking about what's happening in our world, basically. So it talks about, uh, well, before I go on into, into what it talks about, I'll show this, the screen of the um, of our site. But before showing the screen of the site, I want to show you how to, to create an account. So the NFB content, can, what is called Campus, is offered by the Ministry of Education of Quebec. So you don't have to purchase a subscription. Um, but you definitely need to, uh, to create an account to access the content or uh, when you're on the portal of your school board and you can go through the portal of your school board and we, you do have access directly to the content without your account. But we'll show you why the account is interesting for you. What, why is a plus? So I'll just share. Uh, so basically, when you go on the, on the link nfb.ca slash edu slash Quebec, you, you come directly to this page where you enter your school email, very important, submit it, and then find your school and create the account. Just as simple as that. So that's all I wanted to share with this. That's what it's, it's, it's going to be looking like. And so I'll share again. Uh, when you go on nfb.ca, we strongly suggest that you go directly on the education page that you will find here. Uh, so you click on this and it brings you to where most uh, pedagogical material is. So that's why we invite you to go on this page. So basically what we find at the NFB, uh, you, will find, uh, you will find films about mental health issues. You will find films about uh, uh, indigenous people. Uh, science, um, the learning programs, media school, for instance. Um, my colleague uh, Pierre will be talking about that in, in a few minutes. Um, you find the, the education blog and um, the Black communities, diversity and inclusion, and I said science, environment and sustainability. So all of these subjects that are so uh, that are moving a lot these days, you will find them on our site, basically. So uh, the way we're gonna present today, I will spend about 10 to 15 minutes showing you where to find your content, how to do a chapter, how to, uh, to work with the site. And, uh, and our dear colleague, Pierre, who's a teacher at Lester B. Uh, Pearson, is gonna be uh, talking about his experience with our content. So he's going to go in, in more in depth in the content, in the mini lessons and the uh, pedagogical guides and media school. So basically, you are um, when you go on the, on the top of the page, you will find the information on media school. I'm not going to go for now as Pierre is going to go in it. Uh, but what is Media School? Media School is, uh, is a, an online platform that, uh, to create a digital story. Their modules um, and their 12 steps to create a, 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 a digital story. So a, literally a small film, a short film. Um, and so I'll let Pierre go in more details with this. Uh, Ocean School. Ocean School, I thought I saw some people from Gaspésie 
um, before and from somewhere around the Saint Laurent, if I'm not mistaken. And so Ocean School, quickly, what is Ocean School? Again, that would be another hour presentation, but for those teachers near the, the, the St. Lawrence River, you might be very, very interested in Ocean School. It's uh, their modules, again, on different topics linked to, to, to the ocean. And we do have some modules about the St. Lawrence River. So it, you, you might find a lot of interesting content. And it's really uh, based by age group. So you can find a lot of content there with the pedagogical guides as well. Um, and so when you go onto the page, uh, education page, before I enter the mini lessons and the educational playlist, when you go into the uh, education page, you will see, oops, I'm on Ocean School, sorry. Um, yeah, you will see a whole bunch of, uh, of news. Let me just go like this. Uh, so, and it's it's changing on a weekly basis, often even changing more than once in the week. It's it's not uh, it moves a lot as we're we're trying to be uh, very relevant with what's going on in the world on a, on almost on a daily basis. So um, you always have new content. So, for instance, can I? You do this. I'm just going to go like this. Uh, for instance, when you're uh, here, you see the mini lessons for our, our mat maternal home and stories are in our bones. So that's a new mini lesson. So I'll show you the mini lessons. The new releases, uh, you will find the, the newer films. So you can see all films that are newer, new versions. And there's a lot of them. So uh, again, back uh, you find what we call campus film so you have to understand that this site is open also to the public campus films or education films are uh, in this in the subscription you are accessing at this moment so they're exclusive to the subscription so that's the difference between the other films the learning program so you get a lot of information here the education blog what's interesting with that is that uh, it's ri often written by uh, our champions, as Pierre is, Pierre, Pierre Doyon, that's going to be presenting, is one of our champions, which means he uses our content in, in his class. He, we collect information from him. He can write blogs. He comes to us. He comes with us in, uh, in various events to talk about his own experience and so on. So often the uh, NFB, uh, you see it's it's done by the NFB Educator Network in this case. So you will find, you know, the, 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 the mini lessons written or uh, discussed by the, um, the champions from our, uh, from our um, champions group, basically. Um, so we strongly suggest that you do uh, at the end, at the bottom of the page, that you do go and um, and uh, oh, what's the word? Vous um, inscrire, uh, Cre create an account. Uh, not create an account, but uh, yeah, to get to receive the blog, basically. Okay. Uh, and so. There you go. So you will find for higher learning, you can go into this. So there's a lot of things happening. You can find also channels. So indigenous cinema, if you're looking for, there's different ways to search on our site. The learning channels are one among many others to find content. So for instance, you're in interested into uh, indigenous cinema, then you go into in here, Take a look. Real Engine is a, is one of our strongest film. It's the most viewed throughout the country, and um, and then you you have uh, the information. The film is here. You can see the trailer. You can add it to your playlist by simply clicking on the plus for any film. So that's why the account is interesting. You don't have to do your research so many times you can build an entire catalog of content depending on which uh, school subject or which age group or project you have so and you can share it with your fellow teachers or with your students so you you create 
diversity and inclusion, for instance. Well, in this case, that's not what it is, but let's see if I have one on indigenous. It's a, it's a detect, I'll put it in French just for, and then I add to my playlist and I have it in my playlist. So if I look in my playlist here, well, I should find my it's a detect done somewhere. Um, we, it, it's versé inclusion. Oh, I know. It's a detect on GT. So I could find it here, basically. Let me just see. I have so, so many. Oh, there you go. So here it is. So I, on my on that playlist, I can watch the playlist. So in this case, I have many films. We Were Children, um, very strong films about the um, and the um, how do you call them? Uh, I'm sorry for my forgetting my English today. Um, residential schools. Thank you. I'll write this down because I'll say this again. Show schools. Um, and so and so you can watch it here. You can share the playlist here. If you do have Google Classroom, you can just put it into Google Classroom or copy the link and send it to your students should you wish to use that film for them to watch at home, for instance for um, older students. So that's one way to use our work content. That was the, the learning channel. So as you can see, there's black communities, the diversity, we, we went through that before. So that's just one way to search for content. Um, I, uh, any questions at this point? Because I can, I hear someone. No, all is good. All is good. No questions in the chat just yet. Okay, perfect. Um, and so that's one way to use the content. One more thing I want to show you. I'm going to go into any film, Inconvenient Indian, for instance. Let's say there's just one part of a film that you want to watch. You can choose to show that excerpts or that clip. You just click on the scissors and you literally go and create your clip with this little tool that is extremely easy. You obviously watched the film before, just you can even uh, go fast. And then you see my start time for my clip, my end time for my clip. You put a title to it, a description or your questions. And again, you save those. And you will, I'm not gonna do that because I see that it's running now. Uh, and then you will find them in your clips. In order to send a clip, you need to add it to a playlist. So you just, again, just you just want to show, oh, it was right there, I think. So I, you just add it. You go into your clip, you add it to any playlist you created, and there you go. You can share it like you did before in your playlists. So everything that is mine that I worked on, the workshops, which are media school for the moment, Everything that is my work is under my name, my username here. So that's that's one very uh, appreciated tool. That's what teachers tell us. It's, they really, really appreciate that because they don't have to go every single time. How many times in a conference did I have a teacher come to me and say, you know, this film that is an indigenous film. I showed it last year in my class. I don't remember what it is, but we do have like a lot of indigenous films. So. So uh, teachers, obviously, we don't expect them to remember the name of the, the title of a, of a film. So I'm going to show you also another way to find content, uh, the mini lessons. And I really want to show you some of the mini lessons, although Pierre is going to talk about the ones he's been working with. Um, these have been made a maybe a year prior to the um, uh, the pandemic and um, we've had a huge success with these and, and I'll show you why. So let me find something that would be, this is our newest one. We've had tons of, uh, of, of clicks on these. Let me hide this, I understand. Yes, thank you. And so mini lesson for the girl with the red beret. Uh, it's a, so, so you see all mini lessons are built the same. What they are is you have the film, but you have three activities within the film and all the questions are there, all the clips are there. It's all done for you. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just go on the site and, and use the content right away. Uh, so you see it tells you how much time you're going to spend, you know, the date. 
Uh, mini lessons for the girl with the red beret. So it tells you the school subject. I heard that we had someone, uh, a French te a, uh, a teacher that's uh, French as a second language. So that is fantastic for that specific uh, target group. Um, also, our target group could go a little bit lower sometimes and a little bit older, obviously. These are just for your, um, so, so, so we go on. So you've got the film here. You've got the keywords, um, the overarching question, how can a story told through images and based on a Montreal folk song help bring about a better understanding of the local culture? Uh, and then so the, and then you've got the uh, the um, educational synopsis, everything you need to know before viewing the film. The first activity is expressing feelings. So you see you see how it's made. So I, again, I see that we have some French, and I'm really I'm going to take notes on this. That there seems to be a little bug today. This is uh, okay. So this is how it is for this one. As again, Pierre is going to go and show you in details. Any questions at this time? No. Uh, I know we also have teachers from uh, primary, and there's one thing I just want to tell you. Um, there are many, many ways to search film again. One of the, the, the ones that is super fun is the school subjects, and it's kind of hidden here. And so you need to go into more resources, school subjects. Here's another way to find content. So when we go into school subjects, we've got 17 school subjects. Um, so I'm just going to go into language because I for for primary for primary schools teacher, you can oh why uh, I I clicked on the wrong one I think languages French no that's not what I want I just want English, uh, English language arts yeah that's the one I want to go to, uh, the children's stories and fables. Uh, you click on it and you will find 108 and little animation films that you can use for so many topics in the classroom for the elementary kids. Uh, you, you, there's like, for instance, Bonifacio in Summertime, it's four films, the four seasons. It's super well made. There is a pedagogical guide made with it. It's beautifully, beautifully made. So not only does it teaches them about, uh, you know, whatever um, school subjects, but also it, it shows them uh, beautiful art. And I think it's really interesting. They see a different kind of animation than what Disney does or any other ones like that. Uh, so it, 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 it talks about culture a little bit as well. So, so Bonifacio in Summertime, um, education if I go into the education and then so I click on the education it tells me the age group it's talking to the study guide we have an in-depth study guide here that tells you uh, what to do with the film in the classroom it's like a mini lessons but you know it's the the, the study the the study guides are um the longer version of the mini lessons if you if you may so um, so that's another way to find content. Uh, for instance, um, I see we have Big Mouth here. All of the sweater, for those who may not be familiar with that, yeah, hockey season. I mean, my son, 16, has been watching this film over and over again, and so many other, actually, hockey films. Um, and so, so this is also another way to, to search. I could spend a lot, a lot of time. I just want to make sure that I show you, show you an overview of where to search for content. So you, as you can see, you've got a lot of topics. I don't know if we have history uh, teacher here, but obviously we have huge catalog of content. Uh, for those who is, are not aware, the NFV has been in schools for more than 80 years now. And so we have one of the largest library of indigenous, indigenous content made by indigenous people, but also um, uh, history films. Uh, we were one of the largest library of clips and history films in the world, actually with the BBC and, and uh, there you go. So you see, you can go into every details. So that's for that. Um, the other thing I want to show you before I, I let uh, Pierre uh, take the stage, uh, the um, educational playlist. 
what are they? So the educational playlists are the playlists that we thought you might want to uh, see or be interested in. So we, we, we took some films and we put them into categories, basically. So diversity and inclusion from the, uh, these different groups, um, the Japanese internment, like there are some that are very specific because we had to create them. And so everything we created, we put on the page. Indigenous cinema is a very interesting one as it's, there's many, many different age group that we've made a playlist for. And we know that it's difficult to talk. Maybe there's not that much content about indigenous uh, content for, for elementary schools. So uh, because the subject are so uh, intense. But then you've got these little animations that can just open up a conversation about what it means and, uh, you know, some of these things. So you see that these are ready made for you. Environment and geography, again, by age group. Uh, climate change. A lot of environment and sustainability films for uh, ages five to eight. This one, uh, oh, what is it called again? Um, I'm gonna go into it just to show you, just to tell you Meltdown is super fun. It's a short film and it's a, it's a, polar, bar, a polar bear that actually um, uh, has to get away from the polar circle as it's all melting and he's looking for a job. <laughs> so it's kind of cute and it's not as dramatic as, you know, a sea turtle story is fantastic as well. So these are just examples of things. Holidays, obviously, we do have all of these. And arts and language, well, again, like you can see, media literacy, history. So I've spoken a lot about, these are all, oh, sorry, before I continue. So these are all places to find your content. So one thing to remember, go on the education page, and then everything is at the top of the education page. You want to read the news, you read the page of education, and then you want to search for content. It's pretty much all on top. So media school, ocean school, mini lessons. Um, and so, but there's one thing I wanted to show you because I talk about a lot about um, primary schools, but I want to talk about just, just for a second. Um, for science teacher, and hold on, I'm looking for, uh, I want to show you the um, North Star series. I don't know if some of you have seen it or have heard of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a series on um, uh, uh, the, uh, the birth of, uh, of, uh, of stars. And uh, it's about Laurie Rousseau-Neptune, who's, who's a Canadian and uh, is Indigenous Native, uh, was working at the uh, France-Canada-Hawaii telescope for, uh, she was at the head of it. So, so it, we're following her, but we really did that to speak about science, uh, obviously at the secondary level, and you will find five episodes of 15 minutes each let me find it. Let me find it. Um, I'll get back to it in one second. Uh, so that's one thing I want to talk to you about. If there are science teachers here, you, you don't want to miss that. It's fantastic. I'll get to it after I'll show you how to get uh, to search for it. And this one, I just want media education. Um, for those who want to talk about um, uh, the, the impact of social, uh, social, um, uh, media. So if you are not familiar with the Star Wars kid, um, he's a guy from Quebec in, uh, I believe, 2003, if I'm not mistaken. He's literally the first viral uh, video. His video is the first viral video. They call it the client zero of, the, of uh, virality. Virality, I don't know if I can say that. And so um, it's super interesting and he, he goes into the classroom and talk to kids about the impact of what it did in his life because um he did a, he did a video of uh, the, the himself as you can see on the images here himself uh film you know acting as a star Wars uh, character and um and his colleagues took that that tape and they put it on the on the web which 
you know, back then was yet to be a nerd to be able to do that. And so it became viral. That's way before Facebook and all of these things, way before that. So he ended up in all the TV shows worldwide and it ruined his life, literally ruined his life. He had to leave uh, his school and all of that. So that's that's the story about that. So, you know, enough about that, but just wanted to quickly tell you about a few things that we have for you. Um, so uh, North Star, just for one second, I um, just want to find North Star. So uh, it was not North Star. Okay. North Star. So you know what, I will let uh, Pierre start. And I will, um, I will tell where, where it hides itself, North Star, because I really want you to take a look at that. Um, so basically, that's pretty much it for me. Are there any questions? And stop sharing, maybe, or do you guys have any questions? I know we've covered a lot, and I went everywhere, but um, is that helpful to you? Have you seen things that you might want to use? Hi, uh, Hi. thank you. I I think this is really great. I mean, just like teaching about important areas through film like through art I think it's it's just really creative and I see myself using it 100 thank you awesome awesome uh, and don't hesitate one last thing uh if ever you're on the site you can't find there's so much content there is so much content and one of our a, a, one of our goal is to make it easier for you to find the content that you need but if ever you're looking for content you don't find it uh, don't hesitate to call our customer service. We have like five or six people that are there until seven every night to answer your questions. So you have a problem with your account, you have a problem finding some content. Don't be shy, they're there for that. So just wanted to share that. So I'll stop sharing. And uh, perhaps uh, Pierre, you can you can go ahead and, and talk about your experience at the NFB. <laughs> All right, so I'll share my screen now. And I'm going to be building on what Natalie just said. Um, my experience, here we go. Oh, look at that same thing that you got. Or it cuts off the top. Okay, here we go. Um, so my experience is uh, I started using NFB films way back like 20 years ago. Uh, I was teaching history, they have great stuff for that. Um, it's funny, I was working for the ministry and we're making the final exam for SEC 5 and we used one of the videos, the boy who saw the iceberg. Um, and then more recently, I've been using um, a real Indians. It's a really, really good uh, film that a lot of kids really like because uh, it just shows the depiction of uh, First Nations in film. And it's quite, it's, it's entertaining. It's funny. They use a lot of clips from movies and show some of the absurdities. Um, which is really, really effective. Um, yeah, the Star Wars kid, I did that last year in ethics class and it was really, really popular. Kids were like really engaged and engrossed to the fact that this poor guy had his life ruined by, you know, people putting on things online about him. And uh, it's funny because he gets to meet the person who actually put his video online. And um, it, it was very, very kind of poignant uh, this guy apologizing for destroying this other guy's life and the kids really like it really generated a lot of a lot of really good work from them so uh, just to review kind of going back to the mini lesson um, and by the way the inconvenient Indian is one of the books that I give my students uh, when we do lit circles and uh, it's, it's very interesting it, he's the the writer um, is a very kind of he's funny but in a very kind of um, sardonic kind of way. I, I did want to focus on the mini lesson for Elba Room. I know a lot of you are teaching uh, elementary school, and this one is about conflict resolution, um, and it's really great. Um, you know, they basically tell you right there on it what kind of subjects you're going to do. These mini lessons are great because they're like literally a mini lesson. It's like you could just basically pull this out and just follow it, it's it's scripted. So this is problems and conflict and bullying and relationships. 
And, uh, and then they have all these questions, right? They give you the questions. It's like, you don't even have to generate the questions. You just like have it. And then you can basically follow this and do this with the, with the kids. Um, you could even like give this to a, a sub, right? Because it's just scripted. It's just really, really easy. And they're engaged because it's video and that's really exciting for them. And see, and then basically, so after you ask these questions and say, okay, what about in our school? Like, when do you see this in our school? Do you see these kind of, you know, bullying? And what do you do when you get into a fight? And then all kinds of really interesting things about that. They also have the full video, but they also have clips from the video so that they can focus on a specific point. So you should really play with that. And if you are teaching elementary, I would, I would strongly recommend this person uh, have the entire film and relevant clips as well. Um, it's like mac and cheese, right? It's all in the box. You just go right to it. It's uh, scripted and it's short enough to go in one class and you can extend it or, or basically cut it down to your need. The study guides are like more films and lessons, much more detailed, much deeper, often involve multiple films. They're also edited and curated. So they have the whole film, but then they have clips already done just the way Natalie was showing you, but they've done it for you. It's a unit plan rather than a lesson plan. They're, what they're talking about could would take like you know a week, maybe two, maybe more. So just take what is useful. Uh, so um, you know to get to those, basically you go to interactive education over here, and then click on study guides, and there's different subject. That's where you find the North Star. Uh, there's language arts, literary devices through animated films, which I really like working with and uh, stateless which is a really really kind of sad story about how haitians who live in who have lived in haiti haiti for generations if they weren't originally from haiti uh are basically stateless they're just told nope you're not haitian anymore even though they've lived there for many generations and that brings up great things for ethics class uh, so that's what it looks like right so we have all these different things so this is it's kind of a little funny when you first go in because it looks like you have all these different choices, but really like this whole top layer, that's all North Star. And it's just that it's broken into four sections. So observation, research, light, collaboration. And you notice there are different sizes. And so they, they come down with the lesson plan and the unit plan and the specific clips for that one. Then when you get to the next one, origins, that's interesting. That's different. On archive, this is about um, what's going on in libraries, if you're doing library studies. Then we get to Zeb Spider, and a lot of the other ones are actually English language arts, all from that same one, the Literary Codes and Conventions. Uh, there's a really good one for Black History Month, which is just coming up right about now, exploring Black communities in Canada. So again, it's a very elaborate, this is a unit planner rather than a lesson plan. And it gives really, really in-depth things, a lot of different videos, a lot of different uh, ideas to explore. Um, this is the one I was telling you about, exploring literary terms uh, through animated films. And so we have the study guide and it just goes on and on. And basically it's by film title. So like the main place by literary device, which is really cool if you're teaching a specific device by age group and by genre. Uh, so I use it for word of the day. So I always start off and I basically, um, you know, uh, put it up there. Sometimes I'll ask them what they already know about it. If they can come up with a definition, then I'll make the right definition as it's written there. Then they watch the video. Uh, then I'll ask them to uh, identify it when that convention is used. So as they're watching the video, and it's curious, clipped, so it's, you know, it's not that long, but then you, I ask them when it's finished, okay, when did that happen? Make them explain it. Uh, and then kind of insist that they use the term in work. And I even say, you know, get a bonus mark on your paper if you somehow use this term properly. So we have things like this. And and uh, the, for instance, here's this one is dramatic irony, right? This one is dramatic irony. So uh, I explain, and here's the definition. They write down a situation where the audience knows something the characters in the story do not. And there's the name of the film. And so we've got this clip here. It's quite short, this part here, but you've got the whole film here and I was showing this to my wife and she got very upset and ups like, excited like, like she wanted to know what happens to the cow so I'll just show you this short <laughs> clip here and hopefully I put this on the right way so we can watch the video let me know if this doesn't come up properly so as I said uh oops. Uh, 
Um, yeah, as I said, uh, my wife got very upset and she had to watch the end of the video to find out what happens to the cow because she's very worried about the cow. Uh, okay. So you can have, you know, um, just do the word of the day like I do, or there's a full lesson plan. So there, and they even have different types. So first one is frontal teaching. So write five literary terms on it, right? And then give the students a handout, giving them the guiding questions and go over the questions. Then they watch a clip and then they have to basically guess, make it into a game. They have to guess which of the literary terms that they've just studied it is. And then they do the handout and they share their answers and then you give finally give the correct answers and explain why it's correct and if there's enough time they can watch the beginning of uh, the film the, from the beginning to get a better thing because it's out of context right it's just a little clip but it's really fun it turns into a game it's like a game show you're, you're running a game show uh, you can do it as a group work so it offers this for everything you know all the different ways there's even one for online work so in a group work divide up your groups into class into groups of three or four watch the definitions, make a set of cards, and then have them try to match the word to the definition. So there's all kinds of, like, this is like I said, it's really, it's a unit plan. Um, then the workshops. Um, so this is the media school that Natalie kept referring to. So basically I actually piloted this three, four years ago and I do it a lot, I use it a lot. It's really fun, it's digital storytelling. And what it is is, you create a, a, a class for the kids and then you give them the code. And um, then each of these are modules and each module has sections and there's 11 in all, but you don't have to do all of them. It just basically, you can like pick and choose what you want. So the first one's all just explaining what is a digital story. I'll show you an example in a second, then choosing your topic. The research one, it could be done to stand alone. You wouldn't even have to show them any of the other parts of it because it's just really a good lesson on how to do research, how to properly research. And also, it, you know, warning them about, uh, you know, misinformation and fake news. And there's a cute little thing where there's this, um, you know, strange thing about tires being stolen. And it turns out it's all a, a big scam, um, but it's really, really effective. And um, so, as I was saying, there's all these different sections. Uh, the creating photos and videos could be a course unto itself. It's all about, you know, how to use lenses, how to use um, real cameras, you know. And but most of the time, when my kids make their films, they're of course using just um, their camera, so that's a lot kind of easier. Um, so yeah, you just cut it to whatever you need. And but if you follow all the steps. Although you don't have to do all the sections, basically at the end, they've got a film, they've made a film and you didn't have to teach a thing. It teaches them. You just kind of show them the interface and it's amazing to watch because they really take off with it. Like at first they're kind of like stunned. They're, they're like kind of a deer caught in the headlights because they've never worked like this before. Um, but you walk them through the first couple of sections and then they just take off and it's great. They're working at their own pace. Um, so it's really student driven. And then this strange phenomenon happens. Some of the kids will go through it like really, really fast. And then they become the experts. And then without any kind of my experience was without any of my prompting, they started becoming like tutors to the kids who were having trouble. Oops. Um, so that's, that's kind of very exciting. I just, there's 11 modules, two to three sections per module. You use what you want. Um, it works towards making a film. And like I said, a lot of them are standalone. There's one on copywriting uh, right here. Again, it's standalone. You could just show them that by itself just to talk about, you know, what can you take off from the internet? Yes, you can download music, but is that legal? Is it ethical, right? So that works alone. You don't have to make a movie to teach that. Um, and I thought I'd just show you, this is a product. This is just a part of a film that one of my grade eight students made and uh, basically her, she wanted to express her love of photography. So I'll just kind of go in part way through it. Drawing just as much as I did, motivating me to continue creating art. Although I was still very young at the time, this is when I decided that I wanted to be an artist. Like I said, I had wanted to be an artist and that stuck with me as I grew up, but I didn't really know what being an artist meant to me. Although I enjoy drawing, I still didn't know how I wanted to express myself through art. Once I made it to the sixth grade, I had finally found my answer. 
cancer. Around this time, I started to become more interested in film. I was really shy and could never imagine myself being an actor in front of the camera. So I started to become more captivated by what happened behind it. This led me to photography. I was fascinated by the idea that a photo could capture important moments in our lives, as though we had frozen them in time. As we look back on these photos, the emotions while taking them come back to us like we were back in that moment. This is when I realized what kind of artist I wanted to be, and I made this dream of mine start to come true when by the end of the school year, I had received my first camera. And so, um, yeah, that's basically just a, a sample. Uh, I'm doing that right now with my grade eights, and uh, they're, you know, I call it the passion project. It's just something they love, they have to make a film about, and so they follow through the procedure, and, um, it, yeah, it's just, it's really, really fun, and it's very, very useful, and I've had a lot of really positive things come out of it, um, and it's just great to see the kids express themselves in that way. I did it in the grade 11 ethics class, and they made these films, but it was about an ethical dilemma they had experienced, so they didn't really want to share it, but it was really amazing, and I got to know them in a way I never would have known otherwise, because they basically, you know, told us really, really deep secrets about, you know, ethical dilemmas they had actually personally experienced and they didn't have to say it out loud. So they were just, they just became very brave. So I was really proud of them. So those are some of the ways that I use it. I don't know what you can do with it. Thank you, Pierre. This was amazing. Uh, really seeing the product uh, from media school. A film is great. It's, it's so much fun. Well, thank you both so, so much for uh, joining us today and, and sharing your expertise and your experience. And uh, I had never been exposed to, to NFB. I did some exploring last week, but to see really like in depth how to search for things and um, the mini lessons are quite interesting. I am really impressed that each one you know, some of them have such a, a nice guide along with it. And it's as soon as Pierre said, oh, you can use this with your substitute. You know, there's a very nice like read along. I said, oh, I wish I had that five years ago when I was in the classroom. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, really, really great. Um, we'll definitely have you back uh, yes. to, to, to introduce more mini lessons with your champions, as you call them. Yeah. Um, but we really appreciate your both of your time today. So. Uh, thank you. You have hearts in the chat. The teachers are very uh -huh. appreciative. So this is great. And and thank you to my colleague, uh, Pierre, who really took time away from, as you can see, he's still in school. And uh, he's always, it's so much fun uh, to work with him. And thank you so much for using our content and speaking about it. So of course, have a great evening, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.